Hey guys, today we're going to be doing four fun light mods around the Jeep. I think they're going to be super useful and we're only going to be using $34 worth of lights. Our first project is going to be installing lights down each side of the Jeep so that when you unlock the Jeep or open the door, we'll get a little bit of light on the ground. Next, we'll install lights under the hood of the Jeep to light up the engine bay area. And then we'll also mount some lights in the rear cargo area because that's pretty dim with the stock dome lights. Finally, we'll go all the way around the Jeep with a complete rock light set which will be a pretty big job. Those are our four projects and I've got a lot of work and wiring ahead, so let's go ahead and get started. So before we get started, let's go ahead and talk briefly about the lights. For this project, I picked up two eight packs of these stick-on waterproof lights for about $17 a piece on Amazon. These lights have a slimmer profile than your standard rock lights and are significantly cheaper, so I thought they'd be a great choice for both outside the vehicle and inside. Now the lights come daisy chained together in strings of four with plastic clips connecting each light. The clips definitely don't seem to be waterproof, but fortunately we'll be cutting those off anyway for most of the project. Our first project is going to be installing the convenience slash puddle lights under the Jeep and we'll want those to turn on whenever we open the door, press unlock, or flip a switch inside. Now I'm going to be mounting two lights on each side, one near the front of the rock rail and one near the back, and I'm actually going to be mounting them on these little bitty mounts I'm going to make out of aluminum. It's just a piece of aluminum, cut to fit, and this is going to keep us from having to drill into the frame of the Jeep. Anyway, I'm going to make a few more of these mounts and wire everything up and I want all the wires to end up in the driver's side footwell. So no complaints with the install, it went off pretty much without a hitch and everything looks good and now we're ready to finish up the wiring. The positive and negative lines for all the lights are routed into the driver's side footwell and we can go ahead and ground off the negative using one of the factory bolts on the left side. For our positive line, I'm going to tap into the power of the driver's side footwell light which on my 2016 JK is a yellow wire. Now I want my lights to turn on automatically with the dome lights, but I also want to wire in a separate switch. And to do that, we'll need a two input, one output diode. Basically the way this works is that I can have two inputs, in my case, switch power and dome light power, and those inputs cannot transfer power between each other, but they both can send power out to the lights. I picked up a four pack of these diodes for like $15 on Amazon. I definitely think they'll come in handy for future projects. Anyway, now I'm going to use an inline fuse to connect the yellow wire to one input of the diode, hook up the other input to the switch, and we should be all set to go. We'll check out what the lights look like at night at the end of the video, but next let's do project two, which is going to be installing two lights under the hood. For this project, I've already made the wiring harness. We have our two lights up top, Positive and negatives go through this wire grommet, which will go under the hood liner. Then when they come out at the bottom, our positive goes through a switch, inline fuse, and then connects to the positive terminal of the battery, and our negative runs straight to the negative terminal of the battery. To install these lights, I'm going to run the wires up behind the hood liner, clean off the mounting surface, and stick two lights on, and then go down and hook everything up to the battery. To mount the switch, I'm just going to bolt on this spare piece of metal from my bumper and poke the switch right through. So here's how everything turned out. We got our lights up there. They go down through here. Our grommet. I left enough tube on this so that we can flip the hood all the way back. It's secured right there. And we have our switch, which activates the lights. That should be nice and bright. 
So for the next project, we're gonna be adding some lights to the cargo area. If you've ever tried to load something up in your Jeep at night or just do any kind of work back here, you'll quickly realize that the stock dome light is just super weak and you can't really see anything. So for our project, we're gonna be adding two downward facing lights on the top of the hardtop and then running the cables through the hardtop, putting a disconnect where the other two factory connectors are so you can still remove the hardtop and then powering them up. How we power these lights is gonna kinda of depend on your setup. If your Jeep has the factory 12 volt port back here, I would just tap into that power, put a little push button switch right here, and then you're good to go and you can control everything from the back. For me though, I don't have that port, so I'm gonna run power all the way from my switch panel down along the side of the Jeep here and to the lights. Now another way to do that would be to run power all the way from your battery, which is over there, down all the way here, and you could still put the switch right here which probably would be best, but I'm just gonna use my switch panel since it's already there. So there's everything wired up. We've got the power wire going through here. We've got our ground right here, which I showed in the video. Wires go along the side. Here's our quick disconnect, really nice and hidden out of the way. And here are the lights. They look really nice up there, fairly bright. I think they're gonna do a really good job at night. So now we're onto our final and probably the most difficult project, which is gonna be installing the rest of the eight lights all around the Jeep. We're gonna be installing one in each of the four fender wells, two under the engine bay area, and then two back here under the rear bumper. I figured I'd start with the four lights at the rear of the Jeep, so I've gone ahead and removed both tires and the rear bumper. The way we're gonna wire this up is we've got our red wire over here. I went ahead and ran it with the other one. There's a hole right here where the tail lights get their power, a little grommet we can poke through. Poke the power and ground through here. It'll come through here where the tail light goes and the wires will come out down here. We'll run one up in here to the inner fender, slap a light right there. We'll run the other two actually inside the frame rail, go all the way around here, one light under about right here, the other light under about right here, then the final light will go through the frame rail all the way to the inner fender on the other side. Now moving on to the front of the Jeep, which should be a little bit easier than the rear. For the lights under the fenders, we'll stick and screw them into place similar to the rear. Then we'll run the cables through the body of the Jeep and up to the engine bay. For the last two lights, I just picked a bar under the engine and zip tied them into place. Our first test is gonna be the convenience lot. So here's me pressing unlock. As you can see, the lights have turned on on the side and are looking pretty good. On the frame bar, you can see the two hot spots where the lights cast, but once you look on the ground, it's a very consistent light beam, and that's one of the reasons I really like this light setup. Anyway, back and back up, and as the Jeep turns off, you'll see them slowly dim away. And next up, we have the engine bay lights, and as you can see, they are doing a great job of lighting up the engine bay area. These lights definitely came in handy when I was installing the rock lights because it kind of got dark during that project. Third up is the cargo area lights. So here's how they look just with the dome lights. Here's the light output of our new lights and the dome lights. And finally, here's the light output of our new lights with the dome lights turned off. 
And finally, we have our complete rock light setup. Now, I really like how this looks visually. I especially like all the usable light under the rear bumper and the front bumper. The one thing I'm kind of disappointed about is the lights in the fender because although they light up the top of the tires, they really aren't able to provide any light in front of those tires. That's not the light's fault though. It's really just because I have the stock fenders in a low lift. If I was able to increase the lift a little bit or change those fenders out, the lights would be able to reach out to the front. Anyway, here's a look at the lights from the front of the vehicle and another side shot of the complete rock light setup. So that's it for our four projects. I definitely think they're all very useful, especially the first three. The rock lights are cool too, but you might not want them depending on what you're doing with the Jeep, but pretty much anyone can benefit from the puddle lights, the rear lights, and the lights under the hood. As far as longevity, I actually installed the convenience lights on the Jeep about five or six months ago, and during that time they've survived the big snowstorm we had in Arkansas, as well as several rainstorms and stuff. No problem, so even with my semi-questionable waterproofing, I think everything's good to go. Another thing to note is I hooked up most everything to my boss switch, switch panel slash control assembly, and after using it for this and several other projects, I gotta say I'd highly recommend it. I did a whole video review about it, which I will link in the description below, but if you plan on doing a lot of electrical mods to your Jeep, a control assembly like that would definitely be something you should check out. Last thing is that if you're going to do a project like this, I would recommend investing in the proper tools. This is the first project I've used my wire strippers and wire crimpers, and they saved me so much frustration and really increased the quality of the work. I would not recommend going into a big project like this without the proper tools. You could probably do like the underhood lights or the back lights or something, but if you're going to do all four, you need the right tools. Anyway, I'll link the lights I use, the tools, the switch panel, whatever else I can think of in the description, and let me know if you have any questions about the project or my beautiful Jeep. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.